So what is posture? Okay, we'll we'll go in our own sweet way to understand this particular topic. It's not that complicated. What do you feel like? To be honest, if you asked three different people in the world of the information security that what is the meaning of the word called posture, you'll get at least five different answers. And this is reality. Huh? I'm talking with my production experience of 15 years. You ask what is posture? Posture is different in the world of AAA. Posture is different in the world of the firewalls. Posture is different in the, with, with respect to the email security world also, okay? Posture comes there also, mind it. The definition of the term really depends on our point of view, where you are trying to look into the picture. Some security professionals think that the term refers to the health and the security status of the entire organization, which is a true statement. Huh? When anyone will try to do CISSP codes, okay? IC square, information security, okay? Like CISA codes, auditing codes, there also this word posture comes. At that time, the posture is the state of an organization. What is that entire state of an organization? How this company is working at the back end? What is the state? And all. So this posture is not confined to only AAA world. The posture topic is not only being done with eyes, a clear pass. It is a globalized terminology. I wanted to make you understand this first. However, Cisco has introduced this term, posture, Way back 20 years, in 2002 or 2002, with the NAC framework, <laughs> which is called as network administration or admission control. And this word has spread into the world, especially in the world of the network and security, like a wildfire. It's an old terminology. The ITF, which is we call as NIA, most of you might have known about this particular working group, very well-known working group, Network Endpoint Assessment Group. Also use this term posture for endpoints. But other solutions in the industry have called it with the different things. For example, Microsoft used this as NAP. They call this the same technology as Network Access Protection, NAP. Brocade and Broadcom also uses the same terminology called as NAP which tells about what is the health of the endpoint, what is the state of the endpoint, what is the posture of the endpoints. It's a way too old terminology. You may even seen the term compliance. You might have heard about this word in the previous lecture, compliance. The compliance word might have been used. But regardless of the term, what we are discussing here, is evaluating the current state of an endpoint and ensuring that it meets the company's security policy requirement before it admits or get admitted to the network. Is it compliant enough? This, this word might have been used earlier also. If you see the Google meaning of compliance, the word called as compliance, what's the meaning of the word called as compliance? The action. The meaning is the action or fact of complying with anyone's wish. So our wish is that any end user who is coming into the network, he should or she should have the security checks, right? They should have the security checks. We command them to tell that boss, whenever you are com coming, these are the security checks. Whenever you being as a human being enter into an, any of the premises, maybe your organization, 
maybe in at airport are you compliant enough to enter into that premises there will be a guard security guard who will be checking about you who will be doing a security check on you and then he is the one who going to take a decision and let you know about it whether you are compliant to be on board or not so the compliant basically means is whether the end user a person with respect to an organization end user with respect to the network follows and accept the security policies before it's get onboarded on the network that is basically the another meaning of the word called as compliance if he or she or their systems are able to met the security policies they are compliant enough cisco call this process the entire process as called as posture assessment this entire process of evaluating whether the end user is compliant enough to get and met the security policies to get on board this entire process is called as posture assessment whether we want to prevent an un oh, sorry an authorized user from using an unauthorized device such as byod devices like home laptops or reduce the threat from computers infections and malware the goal of the posture process assessment means process is to validate an endpoint before it get authorized into the network okay there is term called as proactive measures right proactive rather than reactive we say is that rather than reactive we should be proactive okay meaning basically the meaning these two words is being used in the organization in a way if there is a pc if this pc got infected by any xyz reasons okay got infected or something happens to this then you going to take the steps to rectify it that measure is called as reactive measures but what we can do so that this particular box should not be getting infected those measures are called as proactive measures so to a certain extent i'll say posture is a reactive measure okay sorry posture is a proactive measure so that before it's not a firewall understand no i'm not we will do that mohammed so yasir will do that Pause this because so many messages being flooded on my WhatsApp. That's the reason I'm taking care of this. So first, okay. So posture is a proactive measure for the end users, or for the end parties, or for the end entities. Next, why should we care about the posture? Why we really need it? Do we really need it in our organization? my point will be of course you need it if you have deployed ice for sure you need to deploy this posture will it be tested in the lab god knows as if not till now it's not been tested but who knows posture on its own does not protect your network from your possible intrusions as i mentioned it earlier it's a process it's a service rather rather you can say that posture is a service okay think in this way what is a posture posture is a service it's a service this service which will be provided by your concern psn unit i hope you understand what's the meaning of the psn so it's a service so it has to be uh, given by a particular psn unit policy service node i'll say that this service is not capable of providing and protecting the protection against any intrusions it is not it is not a firewall it is not a next generation ips it's not an ips intrusion prevention system no 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 it's not that it's a service but how it is going to do or provide the services 
Think about your endpoint security like you would like to have an armor. Think about like an armor. And this armor, like if you went to any battlefield, okay, you don't only have the sword, you would be have a uh, uh, covers to chest, uh, cover your chest, you will be have, having the arm guards, you will be having the helmet, you will be having the leg guards, right? So many things will be there. Consider posture as one of the piece to provide an endpoint security. So if a particular person needs to be get protected, it will not be protected by one thing only. There will be multiple things, right? As an armor is not a single piece of the steel, but instead it is a set of multiple components. And our unreliable components may destroy the entire protection in one shot. Believe it or not, but it would be true. If you don't do the posturing and someone might have access to your system, what could happen? It can gain access to the corporate endpoints and give lots of opportunity to the attackers. If you remember that, I think I did before the VPN. Uh, spy guards are there, spy waves are there, right? Ad wave lecture. When we have talked about the viruses, frozen and worms, right? Attackers basically try to do a social engineering attacks on the end, end users. And those attacks, 90% time, are the random attacks. And their main agenda is to gain the access of the corporate endpoints. So they can steal the information. They can manipulate the tenders, to be very honest. <clears throat> and they... It's not like confining always the, the main agenda of the hacker. If you ask any of the hacker in the world, its agenda is always not to destroy the softwares. The majority of the time, the hacker's agendas, say for example, if I quote it on the percentage, 50% of the hackers around the globe being into the world of bounty hunting, I know this 50%, people wants to steal the information. Their main agenda is to steal the information so that they can use that information. See, in today's world, everything lies around what? The word called as data. Data is everything. The most important thing in today's world. You talk about gold, you talk about diamond. No, no, no. This. A piece of information. So many confidential informations are there. Maybe of your organization, maybe for your company, maybe for a, for a nation, right? This piece of information is very important. And this piece of information needs to be get protected. This data needs to be protected at the endpoint level also, while streamlining over the network or maybe present under the cloud. So the main agenda of the hackers is to gain the access by any XYZ measures. We have discussed already spyware, adware, using any kind of warm or trojans or viruses, doing the social engineering attacks. So endpoint armor consists of lot of the components where gap in one of the component may destroy the efficiency of the entire system. Think. If I'm going for a battlefield and I don't have a helmet, but I have a sword, I have, I have the arm guards and the rest of the thing, but helmet is not there. I'm driving, sorry, I'm riding a bike. I don't have a helmet, but I have the arm guard, everything. I have shoes, I have the leather jackets and everything. If one piece is missing, it can destroy the efficiency of the entire system, isn't it? So ICE posture services help to ensure that your armor of the endpoint always in a good shape. The main agenda of the posturing is to make sure that armor is well intacted. It's going good. It's being maintained well. ICE as a posture does not going to provide you any protection from any kinds of attack. This is what I'm trying to make you understand. But it makes that armor well in good shape. It's a pre or proactive measure, I'll say this. 
before i go and deep dive into this let's talk about a little bit history which is also very important most of you might have known about this but let's talk about little history which is required so that you will get an interest you will get an idea before we start the main thing cisco extended the strong identity controls of dot 1x with the new concept of endpoint posture ensuring that any endpoints attempting to join the network i hope you now know the meaning of the word compliant we just discussed it attempting to join the network were compliant with the company's security policies so can i do the posturing for dot one x users yes can i do the posturing for remote access vpn users yes can i do the posturing for my map users yes of course so what i'm doing is with the posture i'm extending my few more services i'm making sure that the armor is good okay so cisco what they did is they extend the 802.1x for vpns for map for dot 1x and making sure that if an end user so it's it's very good right now what we have discussed earlier is that a user should prove its authenticity against triple a then only it will get the authorization you have certain condition he or she should be fall into this particular group they should come with this particular blah blah protocols they should be confined with the active directory or making this what if i'll say more terms and conditions what i'll say there are few more security policies which needs to be get checked out that is where the cisco added this extended service to their well known 802.1x features now what are the security policies and the requirements on a nutshell just to give you a brief we'll talk in detail validating that the endpoint is running with the end antiviruses anti malwares amavs they are installed if they are installed are they running properly if they are running properly have they have the proper patches whether the windows firewalls whether the mac or mac os macintosh operating system firewalls are enabled and another important checks like certain files certain um, service packages and these other important checks add to the normal and legacy 802.1x add a lot more to the authorization aspect of 802.1x in order to keep a company safe from the malware see i just wanted to make a note over here it doesn't mean that if you are running posture if doesn't mean that if you are running an a next generation firewall that you are 0% risk free no 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 this is not a true statement yeah, there are so many zero day attacks happening in today's world also that i'll take in detail also when we'll start with the next generation firewall you'll get more idea about it if any company in the world is saying that boss we are zero person risk free it's a falsified statement boss we have done posturing in our we have applied a service please understand posture is a service again i'm repeating this word we have deployed a posture service in, in our organization along with the next generation firewalls i think we are safe from any kind of attacks it's a falsified statement you can keep it to an up to uh, up to a certain extent you can keep your company safe that's fine but who knows what the hacker is thinking on the other side of the podium so this solution this overall picture this overall idea that 802.1x which we have learned it with certain extended services with this certain extended services this together has given a solution called as nac network admission control you getting my point legacy 802.1x with this extended posture services security policy requirements cisco has given this name and this solution has given a name called as nac solution i hope you are getting an idea now what is nac is cisco a nac solution of course yes why it not only give you 802.1x service but it also give you certain security policy policy requirement services also 
it provides you the posturing services on top of that. And it was designed to use 802.1x, so it could leverage the Cisco I's features and the world's most deployed, widely deployed, I'll say, radius servers as per their market percentage shares. And today, we all refer this solution as NAC framework solution. It's a globalized terminology, NAC framework solution. So how this NAC solution is fully dependent, how this NAC solution gonna work on? Is there any requirements for that? What they have decided, what they have thought in the earlier years? There are so many things they have discussed on. So this NAC framework, which we were discussing, because 802.1x is solely dependent on our protocol, which we know and well known as EAP. So NAC framework, right? This extended services has also tried to send the posture data over the EAP communication. So that the PSN or the policy server would have the posture data when making the decision. So what they did is, what Cisco tried to do earlier is that extended services, we have the legacy 802.1x, right? Which solely dependent on our EAP, which carries the data, depending on the different encapsulation mechanism for the layer to its, its Ethernet and followed for layer 3, it is basically the radius protocol. So for this extended services, for the posture services and for that posture data to check the state of the data, Endpoint. How to check the state of an endpoint when you get certain data? When I get certain data about that end user, then only I'll be able to make certain decisions on top of that. Na? So that data needs to be reached towards eyes. That data needs to be reached to the decision maker. And the decision maker in our case is nothing but the eyes. So that entire NAC, which you understood right now, network admission control, what is that? 802.1x with extended service. That is your NAC framework. Also try to use EAP only. So that over the same EAP, right? Not only the end user identities, username and the passwords and other attributes will get the data about the extended services also. But it turns out that someone is annoyed. Eep doesn't like it. Eep has certain problems with that. Overloading the Eep communication with that much data, you won't believe it. The posture data could be enormous. So many things you need to know about the end user. There, there is no limit. There is limit, but to a certain extent. And that limit is huge, enormous. You can, with that posture data, you can overload the EAP communication. And of course, overloading the EAP communication with that much data did not work well also. In fact, post this ITF, I hope this everyone knows, Internet Engineering Task Force has actually eventually created certain protocols, PT-EAP and PT-TLS. Posturing EAP, posturing TLS, specifically for the posture extended services data. They have done it. They have specifically done this. As a challenge, as it was to use EAP to carry the posture data, the original concept of using NAD to send the data to your eyes, which is PSN, policy service, was absolutely spot on. Many startup companies were performing the NAC solution using the methods other than 802.1x also. Who was that? Who were those particular things? There were third-party companies also who were using the so NAC framework, NAC solution is not only confined with Cisco, okay? It's a very old solution. It's a very old solution. So there are certain startup companies who are doing this on their own, not using EAP. Mm -hmm. 
They were not using ape at that time. They don't want to burden ape. However, we have, however, we do have ape, uh, PT ape as well as PT TLS. But they don't want to rely on that because there is a better way to do it. Instead of going with the EAP, we can use it in a different way also. What is that? Let's discuss this. The clear nader at that time in the network access control space was Perfigo. Anyone has heard about this company before? Anyone over here? Windows and I ah, NPS supports that, sir. Still support power. Correct. Anyone has heard about this company before? Perfigo? No one has heard about it. Ah, it's being long, right? So the clear leader in the network access control space was the company called as Perfigo, which created a clean machines in nine appliance solutions. It's a solution given by Perfigo. And what does what Cisco does best in the world? <laughs> Acquisitions. What Cisco does? You are doing good? Okay, come. In fact, I also wanted one time that I'll make one startup, do my have my own R&D department, have certain researchers, and I'll sell my product to Cisco. I'll be a millionaire. I'll sit, I'll go to my farmhouse, sit, enjoy, relax. Because this Cisco is a, such a huge company, if they see anywhere the competition, they hire, not hire, they acquire it. And Cisco does the same. Cisco has acquired the company called as Perfigo in 2004 and renamed the solution NAC Appliances. This gave a Cisco a solid foundation with strong A22.1x already identity control. They have the limited posture capabilities and separate appliance-based solution for the customers. Looking for those who are looking for the strong posture controls with less secure identity control. There you go. So what changes has been done with the Perfigo? What they have done? So with the eyes, the posture data which we were trying to send it over the EAP and overburden it out. The posture data is sent from the endpoint to your server, to your PSN via the TLS. Rather than dependent on EAP and overload your EAP, they use TLS. This means that the device must be on the network before it, they have to. They have to be on network. They have to onboard. And then only the posture is going to get assessed. I want to go to an airport. Okay. Before my immigration is going to happen. Before I board on the airplane. This is my airplane. And this is me. Right. If I have to board on this airplane. I have to come inside the airport now first. For that, I have minimum security checks. I have my, what do you call that, airplane ticket, think in that way. And there will be a last extended check for me at the immigration level. Where they're going to check my data. They're going to check my passport in detail. They're going to cross-question me where you are going, why you are going. Is this a business trip? Is it a tourist visa? Are you going with your family? Are you going alone? When you will come back? What is the purpose of visit? Extra checks will be there, right? These extra checks are nothing but your posture. Think in this way. Think in this way. But to do this extra checks, to have to be questioned by that immigration officer, I have to present in front of him. Na? I have to be on board. Similarly, if that posture, which I said it, is a service, which is a service. If that needs to be get portrayed to that end user, you have to be on board. You have to be on your network. Then only that assessment will start now. Posture assessment. Remember I use that word. Then only the posture 
services are going to be get applicable then only the questions will be raised so the idea was simple but to get, do this assessment and to be on board technically to be on board i'm not gonna give that guy the full access means there is a user when i'm saying that this user needs to be on board needs to be on network to do the posture assessment by the sir call us eyes we need to give him an access but not the full access not the full access we will give them a limited access that much access which is required by the eyes to check the state of the end device so this is being a, a, a accomplished by providing the temporary access for the process assessment means process and if required on top of this you can do the remediations also and you give the chance to them to remediate it out so the end point needs an agent some kind of agent okay an end point needs an agent who is going to scan the system thoroughly for this kind of integration whatever the integration has needs to be done for this state okay so if i want this eyes provides a services what services extra check for extra check where on the client machine to make sure that they are providing and giving all the security checks before they come on board so there should be someone who going to check this client and that someone which we say for this client to check whether he is compliant or she is compliant with their devices if they require an agent they require an agent to for this okay an agent is required to perform this interrogation for sure and what agent precisely we need it for the end points which will be the agent who will be the agent who is going to do the scanning who is going to do all the things for us who is going to check that whether this particular end user whether bob user who is using his laptop is having firewall on or whether this file is being present in this particular drive or whether its services are running or not or up to date you need an agent you need someone who is going to check this scan it out and that agent is nothing but any connect that is any connect okay that is any connect it's a modular agent and one of its module which is called as it is called as modular agent why the word called as modular we used to have normal switches i hope everyone have such seen the switches right in your career for sure 3850 switches you might have seen you might have seen 3750 switches right what are these switches these are normal stand up switches they have their own control plane they have their own data plane they have their own modular plane right then you might have heard about big core layer switches 6800 series catalyst nexus 7k you might have heard about it big giants nexus 9k mds i used to love this boxes for fiber channel technology in data centers what they have done in this they have separated the control plane with the supervisor engine soup models anyone heard about this soup model before in this batch soup engines anyone heard before supervisor engines good where the your management planes resides where your uh, control plane resides and you have the fabrics present 
where basically what you do is where the data plane system runs your M cards, your F cards, your, your different kinds of cards, which is supportable for layer three, layer two, or different services. <clears throat> These boxes, because you insert in the chassis modules, right? You insert different, different cards, different, different modules, which provide different, different concept. These switches are called as modular switches. Multiple things are there. In a very similar way, ICE, sorry, my bad, any connect is a modular agent. You understanding this point? Modular agent. That means it gives multiple modules to you. And one of the module is system check, system scan, umbrella, you might have heard about it. And for endpoint security like this, there are so many lists, which I'll show it to you. One of the module of this modular agent, which needs to be provided at the system level is system check, which is going to scan thoroughly your system, depending on whatever the profile you have created. Okay. Next. And this any connect is on the client side of the posture communication and the ICE posture subsystem that runs on the PSN. So agent is on the client. You have this client, any connect is on the client. The agent is on the client and your decision maker is your PSN, which is running on the other side of the system. This subsystem, this entire subsystem consists of an engine, policy engine, and a compliance module, which we will slowly and slowly learn it up. What is compliance module? So I have a system where the agent is present. Who is the agent? Any connect. Okay. And this is your PSN, which is policy service node. Okay. What's going to happen? On this PSN, you need certain compliance module. Wherever the word module comes, that means multiple things are going to come. Think in this way. Multiple, module, modular. Okay. Multiple things are there. And what module we are talking about? Compliance module. What is the meaning of the compliance? Security checks. Remember how I started the lecture by the word called as compliance only. The checks. What is the firewall engine? What are the different engines over there? What are the different software? What are the condition? Which operating system? And so on and so forth. So the compliance module is basically, it's a module. The word module is coming. That means so many things. So that means the word is referred over there with the things as a library of what are the supported softwares. Adobe Breeder, Avast Antivirus, Casper Sky, AVG, Microsoft Office, uh, Note Plus, Note Plus Plus. These are the list of the different softwares, libraries of different softwares. What are the different sets of conditions which we'll talk about it? What are the different operating system they have? Windows 10 with this service package, Windows 8, XP. I don't think so, XP is there. Maybe I'm wrong. XP is long back. Windows 7, Mac OS, and so on and so forth. And this module which we are talking about, this compliance module, right, is going to exist in ICE subsystem also and the AnyConnect system scan module also that remember the scan which i'm talking about system any connect agent system scan and it is in the essence the software that instruct them both how to do this process so i have a client where this module is being present using any connect and i have this module present in ice also any connect software, which is a modular software, has one module 
called as scan. This scan system is going to scan the entire system and check the modules. Whatever the modules is present in ICE, if got a match, the assessment is done. If not, we will give them time to do the remediation. Timers are there. Four minutes by default. We'll talk about them also in detail. But it is also an utterly true statement. It all depends on your compliance module. What is your compliance module? The checklist. Think in that way. Software, OS, your checklistments over there, everything. If this is out of date, it is very important. That's the reason it is very important to update these modules. You might have seen that every six months or every four months or every three months or might be every two months, new, new softwares are coming. And each software has its own, what do you call, patches. Right? So when using the posture assessment, the entire NAC framework which we are talking, it is very, very critical. And that will be your process number one thing to do. If you want to know how to do the posture as a lab, the first step of the lab is always to update the things. I believe you guys have seen the lab, right? Update will be there somewhere. You need to update your systems. You need to update your checklist. It is very critical to update the compliance modules as up to the date. It's very important. And many TAC cases, we have well-renowned TAC users over here. And the TAC cases are open. I'm not, maybe wrong, but whatever I heard over the period of time, many TAC cases are open due to the endpoint failing posture checks because their compliance is not being updated. <clears throat> are we going good till now getting an idea guys am i able to make the previous lecture up now the state is going up Chalo, good the base is important lab though you will understand when you'll do 10 15 times now the dots needs to be get connected i'm trying to get connected the dots the leftover dots Next. What is its stack cases problem? See, the remedy for such cases is simple to update the ICE and the AnyConnect compliance model because might possible your client is running with the new antivirus, new Kaspersky, new Avast antivirus, whatever AVG. And the new compliance model is re required to detect the new one also. No? Maybe your client is running old, ICE is running with the new checklist. Or maybe the endpoint is running with the new, ICE is running with the old checklist. Both the ends, the update needs to be provided. And if we need to understand the posture, we need to understand the foundation. ICE posture has three main pillars. Okay. Pretty much the same like the 802.1x. Under the 802.1x, you have three major components, isn't it? Supplicant, authenticator, and the eyes, AAA. In a very similar way, the foundation lies between these three boxes only. Okay. Endpoint. Where the agents are going to run. Okay. PEP, we call that policy enforcement points. Can be WLC controller, can be firewalls, can be routers, can be switches. And a policy decision-making point, which is PSN in our case. This is how exactly they work. These are the main pillars. So if we start about the end point, there are four different types of agents that you can have it. 
what about the agent when you start with the three pillars the first goes with the end point where you need to install the agents and there are four different types of agents that you can put it across one of the agent which i have told you a moment back is any connect you can have a temporary stealth agent you can have that the problems are there with this you can see and read about it so what is the meaning of the word called as stealth cautious the movement which is very quiet stealth mode you might have heard about it quiet movement secretly so the movement that is quiet it is careful movement in order not to be seen or not to be heard that is called as stealth not to be seen so for sure no user interaction i'm trying to make the dots connected no user interaction is required it automatically at the back end going to discover the apps for us it is automatically going to discover the hardware requirements for us it applies the anti malware check the firewall checks can you do the remediation not possible remediation is not possible treatment remediation means treatment <clears throat> remediation is not possible what is the meaning of the remediation if an end user is not capable to fulfill the checklist we will give them certain time to come out from those particular points to come out from that particular situation okay that is the main meaning of the word called as remediation so remediation is not possible with the temporary stealth agent there are so many open standard startups it is not necessary always it has to be any connect like as i told you perfigo was a startup company who was doing the same thing with cisco has acquired it in a very similar way there are 50 plus companies who have their own agents startup companies are there who can do at the agent level they can do stealth mode without seeing any by anyone they can discover they can do the interaction with the with the hardware but it will not give you a user interaction in a very similar way you have temporal agent stealth is not there eyes gets posture status from the endpoint users and get redirected to the portal remediation manually is there you can do manual remediation perfectly fine you can customize this third party basically similarly you have any connect stealth agent is also there any connector is running at the back end what is uh, doing what all the checks for us firewall checks anti malware checks file checks and all but in the stealth mode any connect can also run in a stealth mode <clears throat> so ice which is being a ps and unit gets the posture updates or status from the endpoints agent could be installed from the portals customization post posture conditions remediation limited quote unquote limited support is there not full and that is where the last comes into the picture full fledged mode of any connect full any connect agent not in stealth mode i'd guess the posture status from the endpoint agents could be installed from the portal agents can be installed from the firewalls and any other sdm which we call as software distribution methods all the ice 
features are supportable with this. 90% people go with this. Full fledged any connect agent. But there are four ways are there which I'm trying to tell you. The best way is any connect full fledged agent. Now the point comes is how these agents are going to make up our armor. You remember how I started my lecture? Armors. How these agent checks the endpoint armors. The first is the compliance module, which we have discussed it. Compliance module has to be there in the eyes as well as in this system scan system of the agent. It offers the ability to access the endpoint compliances, whether they are compliant or not. You know what? This Cisco's compliance module, which we are talking since code for last three slides, compliance, compliance, compliance module, compliance module. Basically, they use the OSS framework, which has been given by the Ops VAT for the detection and remediation. If I'll open this up for you, this OSS framework, it's an open standard. It's not by Cisco. Cisco follows this framework. Cisco follows this framework. This is not done by Cisco. Cisco is bound to follow this. Thousands of applications, one software framework can manage bloody everything at the back end. It all depends on the API calls, application programmable interfaces. This OSS framework enables the software engineers and technology vendors to develop open standard products that can detect the engines, that can detect the softwares, that can detect the services also. Classify them out. This service is this. Not only they detect, they understand, they classify also and manage thousands of third party applications. Enables implementing a simple and easy compliance check of the endpoints via the embedded libraries. What I said it earlier, what is compliance module? Module means multiple. It is a library. Compliance module consists of embedded libraries and these libraries are completely dependent on OSS framework, which is an open standard globalized word. These libraries, these modules, these compliance modules supported for windows all the operating systems see the agent the agent that needs to be run is on the endpoint do you think that in the entire world all the organizations are using only windows your endpoint could be windows right your endpoint can be mac your endpoint can be a linux based it could be mobile solution did you can have the ipads also running you can have the Samsung iPads also, Samsung uh, uh, pads, I'll say that, which runs over Android. You can have the MDM solution, mobile device management solution, which is also running with the, maybe the operating system over there running is what Android. The mass in the world uses Android. But that doesn't mean that it should support only Android. Where is the granularity then? The granularity has to be achieved, right? It should support a system, a solution, should and should. You should not sell a particular solution in an XYZ company saying that, boss, we're going to support this. I feel bad when someone asks, this, do you sub teach this? Do you teach this? I'm bound to say no because I don't have the time, to be honest. It's not a good solution, I might say that, and I accept it. But alone, I can't do the things, right? So you should have a granularity where whatever you are doing, you are selling any solution, you are building any solution, it has to be granular. It has to be done for the mass as well as for the minority also. What are the supported different types of third-party applications? Antiviruses, anti-spywares, personal firewalls, anti-phishing, backup, patch management, whether the hard disk has been encrypted or not, health agents, URL filtering, DLPs, data loss prevention, which we'll talk about in near future. <laughs> it's 
excuse me, web browsers, desktop sharing, VPN clients, VMs, device accesses, mobile applications on different ones. What is this? Okay. They can detect the antivirus via the APIs. Retrieve the name and the version of the antivirus product. Can you imagine? Which antivirus you are running? And what is the name? Verify the product authenticity. Is it proper? It is being downloaded from the legit website or it is being downloaded from the torrent. Ensure that the installed product has been signed by the vendor. You have the license or not for the same whether it's being spoofed out or not. Retrieve the count of the malware signature, how many signatures in total that particular antivirus or anti-malware has been stored. Retrieve the time of the last definition. When this, when you're, so if I have, where is this? This is my antivirus. I'll check on updates. Run smart scan. My definition you see at the bottom, checking for the updates. This can retrieve that also. Retrieve the last time the definition got updated. Retrieve the real-time protection status. When the system has been scanned fully. Retrieve the history from that system itself. It can retrieve it out. How many malwares this endpoint has detected. Remediation. If got to know something can happen, you're going to start. Launch a full system scan automatically or manual. Enable the real-time protection. Activate an update of the virus. Automatically, the update can be done for your end. Web browser API. Detection. Retrieve the name and the version of your web browser. Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox. Retrieve the list of the installed browser extensions. So if I'll just show it to you. If I gonna go. Where is this? These are the different extensions we have. I have the, you see in the Google uh, uh, Chrome, I do have Zoom scheduler over there. There are different extensions you can have. You can manage the extensions. You can add as many as extensions in your Google Chrome. Classroom, you can add it over there. Office 365 extensions you can have. Multiple things you can have it. So all the install extensions, check whether the browser is a default browser. Or it's not. Might possibly say, say, for example, I do have Google Chrome as well as I do have Safari. If you have noticed that when I aware of my slide is, if anyone have noticed about it, when I was opening, when I clicked on this, okay, this link, this hyperlink, we call this as a hyperlink, automatically it has opened in my Safari because it's a default one. Determine which browsers or browser is open. Determine which sites are currently site also it can tell it. It can retrieve the entire browsing history, determine whether the browser's pop-up blocker is enabled or not. You know this, I hope so. Whether the pops up are blocked or not. Give me a minute. So remediations, close the browser. If you th they think that you are doing something bad, the browser will be closed immediately. Securely delete. Re these are remediation. Someone can delete. If I don't, if I want, if I want, you when connected to my network in the office premises, I don't want your Google Chrome to be open. I can do this as a remediation. I can close your browser without doing anything. Like this similar way, the story never ends. You can do the check, uh, detect the hard disk encryption product, encryption state, which algorithm algorithms you are doing it, viral uh, machine, virtual machine uh, APIs are there. This is freeware, that's the reason the ads are coming. Detection, the public sharing interfaces, NPS is available or not, FAT62 is available, FLAT32 is available. These are the testing tools looks like. So why are we discussing about this? The compliance module, which we call as a library, which has to offer us hundreds of softwares as in total, follows 
the OSS framework, which is an open standard. Cisco follows it. <laughs> Posture updates includes the predefined checks. As I mentioned, we have discussed already rules, support charts, and the latest definition version. And from where you can download these updates, where I can do it. There are two ways. Like if I go back, where, where to go back, where to go back, where to go back. If I'll come back over here, this is my antivirus. This is my endpoint. This is one of the agent think this way. I want this agent to be get updated. How will I do is I'll do direct connect with this AVG with what? With my internet. It will get connected to the internet. The virus definition will be updated or else. So one is with via the web portal, via the web, or one is offline. I can say that one is online, one is offline, one is via the internet, one is without internet. You go to the Cisco site, you download it, you upload it. That is offline updates. So you can do offline as well as online updates. You can do that. This entire posture process, which we call as assessment, has, in my knowledge, I'll make sure that you will understand it, nine processes or nine steps are there, which I'll make sure that theoretical wise will be clear to you. It may look complicated, but trust me, if you can trust me, I hope you know how we have discussed IPsec. Still, I believe everyone knows the nine messages. These are the nine things. The way I have taught you the nine messages, I don't think so. You have forget it. Very same way, I'll tell you these nine these nine processes also. Okay, I'll make sure that the things will be easy. It is complicated for others, but for in next two days, this will be one of the most easiest thing that you have. The process needs to be get understood. Okay. The GUI is a little bit complicated. I accept it. I accept it. And I believe Cisco guys will also accept it. Little bit complications are there. With respect to the GUI, user interaction, which I personally have worked on clear pass. It is straight away. Clear pass, user interaction with respect to the posture things is very good when it comes to eyes. But if you're going to do it multiple times, that's what I've written it over here. Just do it 10 times. Trust me. You don't need, you don't need a switch. You don't need this. Just keep on following those things on particular eyes. Open eyes. We keep on doing it to your end. Things will fall in this correct place. It is simple. It will make sense to you. So the first thing and the foremost thing is, Settings. We'll start from the settings because to do any kind of this assessment, posture assessment, the things comes to know about it. What is and what needs to be done? Timers, so many things. Conditions will be there. What are the remediations will come into the picture? Any requirement is there? Policies where the decisions needs to be done. Client provisioning, client provisioning policy, authorizations, authorization policies, and many other stuffs. Nine things are there, which we will slowly and slowly and gradually and gradually, we're going to see it about it. Second time asking in today's lecture, are we going good? Able to understand, guys? The things are falling into the place now. Hope so. Of course, you need. Next. Now, another term comes over here, which needs to be get addressed. Elephant in the room. What is client provisioning? 
before i explain i want to you guys to let me know about it what you understand by the word called as client provisioning all right what is client provisioning who will tell me what whatever you have the idea whatever you got the idea about client provisioning what is client provision with your term with your respect so we are waiting for that na first i'll finish the theory and then we'll do the practical in that way na my objective is first to clear theory and then we'll do it right nagender introducing end user permitting the client permitting the client what deployment initializing user with details mm -hmm. initializing user with details okay who else i'll first try my level best to give you the layman thing and then we'll talk about in the advanced way let's start from the word provision then you will get more idea if i'll click over here provision the action of providing or supplying something now think the same way client provision provide something to the client provide something to the client who is going to provide something who and what will be provided to the client who will tell me agent very good luisia ice is going to provide i hope you are getting my point posture and client provisioning are two different things posture in totality is a service which will be provided by a psn and this psn should have certain resources to be provided to the client that process is called as a client provisioning you getting my point so posture is a service in eyes that allows us to check the end point is compliant or not is it compliant or not simple that is this service that is the meaning of posture before allowing them to get connected to the network but this psn to check whether this endpoint is compliant or not requires an agent who is going to do a system check this agent needs to be get provisioned needs to get provided to the system and this is called as client provisioning so what is client provisioning if i'll write the definition client provisioning is nothing but which ensures that the end point receives the appropriate agents what it does it receive the proper agents okay it receives the proper agent good so now i think that hurdle is also being cleared in most of the people's head we will discuss we will discuss about the client provisioning their resources what are the different resources that you can provide it any connect what are the provisions what are the things the psn is supposed to provide any connect agent correct agent needs to be get provided profile needs to be get provided say for example the compliance module needs to be get provided compliance these are the requirements by the eyes to be get provided to the client this is client provisioning so the client provisioning will always have the resources you can put certain top of that client provisioning policies we'll talk about all this and we'll start this from tomorrow 